everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, we're gonna talk about reference angles, what they are, how to use them, all that stuff we're gonna talk about right now. So first of all, this is a re-upload. I did have a video up on this topic, and you know, I thought about it a little and rewatched the video, and I thought, you know what, I could do better. I could provide a better explanation. So I am constantly looking to improve the quality of the content of this channel. I do care about the stuff I upload, and I put a lot of time and effort into these videos and preparation and making them and all this stuff. So thank you all who have recognized that and for your support. And you know, I just wanna help as many people as I can. So I thought since reference angles are such a important topic in trigonometry, they're probably one of the most important topics to understand. I wanna get this video down, I wanna get it right and provide a clear explanation. So that's what I'm going to try to do right now and hopefully some people can learn some stuff. But reference angles, yeah, they're so important to understand how to use because they save us time, they save us a lot of memorizing, and they just make things easier in general when we're evaluating trig functions and trig expressions and all these things. So let's go ahead and get started. Reference angles. The angle formed between the terminal side of an angle and the x-axis. This is my definition for a reference angle. There may be other definitions, but this I always just remind myself, draw toward the x-axis from the angle. And that's how I remember reference angles. So if we're given some angle like this, theta equals pi over four, the best way to do it is just draw a little cross. We're drawing a sketch of the x and y axis, and I'm gonna sketch this angle in standard position. So that means my initial side is here along the x-axis. My terminal side is sticking out here at that pi over four. It's kind of like 45 degrees, right? But usually we use radians. So this is my theta. So what is the angle formed between the terminal side of an angle and the x-axis? That's actually just the angle itself. So what is the reference angle for pi over four? It's actually just pi over four. And for the sake of this video, I'm gonna write reference angles as theta hat. That just means a little triangle over it. Theta hat equals pi over four, that is the reference angle for pi over four. So for practical uses, we never really find reference angles in the first quadrant, it just doesn't make sense. But maybe you'll get a quiz or exam question asking what's the reference angle of something that's in the first quadrant and it will be good to know that it's just the angle itself. But yeah, for practical uses, we don't ever really do that. But something like this, this would be beneficial to find the reference angle and I'll show why a little later in the video. Theta equals two pi over three. So same process, I'm sketching the angle, 2 pi over 3, that's somewhere right about here. So this is my initial side, my angle opens up, and this is my terminal side. So what's the angle formed between the terminal side of the angle and the x-axis? That's this right here, that's this part. So we can think about this. I know that this is 0, this is pi. 2 pi over 3, well I could rewrite pi as 3 pi over 3. And so it's clear that two pi over three, I'm just kind of stopping pi over three short of three pi over three. So this angle formed here is actually pi over three. So my theta hat is pi over three. Pi over three. And there are many different ways to think about this. I could subtract pi minus theta to find those angles in the second quadrant. And some instructors even give formulas for each quadrant. Theta, uh, pi minus theta, theta minus pi, uh, 2 pi minus theta, those sort of things. I don't personally like memorizing formulas, so I just draw it and think of drawing toward the x-axis. So that's how I personally do it. All right, theta equals 7 pi over 6. Let's find the reference angle. I'm going to draw my sketch. 7 pi over 6, that's actually in the third quadrant. Because 6 pi over 6 is pi, and we are just pi over 6 units past pi. Because this is my initial side off here to the right. I open up to form my angle. So this pi over six is actually my reference angle. It's pretty clear to see in this one, okay? So my theta hat, which is my reference angle, is equal to pi over six. All right, what about seven pi over four? I can sketch this very quickly. Seven pi over four, well, let's think about it. We know this is pi, this is three pi over two, this is two pi. So what is two pi? I can rewrite two pi as eight pi over four. This is pi, I can write that as four pi over four. And I can write three pi over two down here as six pi over four. So six pi over four. So as we can see, our angle here, seven pi over four, is directly in between six pi over four and eight pi over four. It actually sticks out just like this. So we start at our initial side, we open up. This is our terminal side. What is the angle formed between the terminal side and the x-axis? Well, that is simply this angle. And you can think about stopping pi over four radians short of the full 
two pi rotation, so that will leave us with pi over four for our reference angle. So when you're ever in doubt, this may have been a waste of time. Maybe some of you could have looked at, at this and immediately noticed that it was gonna be pi over four. But if you're ever in doubt and you're confused, rewrite everything with a common denominator and it'll be a lot more clear what your reference angle is, okay? So reference angle, again, pi over four. All right, so reference angles are most useful for evaluating trig functions and for getting exact values for stuff like this, sine seven pi over four, cosine negative four pi over three, okay? And I don't personally have the whole unit circle memorized, I only have the values in the first quadrant memorized, and I can find any exact value using just that first quadrant, that's because I know how reference angles work, coterminal angles work, and I know all the information about the four quadrants as far as what's positive and what's negative. So that's why reference angles are so important. It saves you so much memorizing. So I'm gonna show you right now how I can find seven, sine of seven pi over four without actually having this memorized, because this is on the unit circle. Maybe you're looking at it right now and you know what it is. But I can find this using this idea of reference angles. So let's think about this. When we found our reference angle, we drew to the x-axis. If you're looking at your unit circle, you're going to notice a pattern. This 7 pi over 4, we've already determined it was down here. But think about where this 7 pi over 4 and really where all these values on the unit circle come from is these special triangles. This is a 40, 40, I'm sorry, 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? That's where all these values come from. We also have a 60, 30, 90 triangle. And when I drew the unit circle, I showed, when I drew the unit circle, I showed us reflecting these into different quadrants. And that's why these points were similar, what was the only difference? The sign in this first quadrant is positive because our y is positive. The sign in this fourth quadrant is negative because our y is negative. The sign in this third quadrant is negative because y is negative. And the sign in this second quadrant is positive because y is positive, okay? But what is similar about these values? They're the same values other than up here we have positive root two over two and down here we have negative root two over two. So by finding the reference angle, right, because the reference angle for all these is that pi over four, pi over four, pi over four. That's this distance from all of them. So what do they all have in common? Well, they have the same value other than the signs are different, whether it's positive or negative. So basically what I'm saying is if I can find the reference angle for seven pi over four, I can evaluate this just by evaluating that reference angle and then using my knowledge of what quadrant this is in to determine if it's positive or if it's negative, okay? So sine seven pi over four equals sine of pi over four, but what quadrant are we in? We're in the fourth quadrant, so it actually equals negative sine of pi over four. This I have memorized because it's in the first quadrant. I know that this is root two over two, so I have negative root two over two, and I think I gave the answer away uh, when I was talking about the description, but that's okay, we have another example. And this is why reference angles come in handy so much is because people who have the unit circle memorized and just go off of that, you give them something like this and they're almost always stumped because they look at this and they look at their unit circle and they say, wait a minute, I don't have this, okay? So maybe you add two pi to this and you have then you have something that's on the unit circle if you know how coterminal angles work, I can add or subtract any multiple of two pi to this and the cosine of that angle will still be the same. And if you understand that, then good. But you can also do this by using reference angles. Let's think about it. Where is this negative four pi over three? Well, since it's negative, I'm going clockwise. This is three pi over three, four pi over three. So I'm right about here somewhere. Okay, I'm right about here. So what is my reference angle? It's this little part, right? That's my reference angle. It actually turns out to be pi over three. So cosine of negative four pi over three equals cosine of pi over three because that's the reference angle. But is it positive or negative? Well, let's see, we are in the second quadrant, which means that x is negative, which means that cosine is negative. So instead of writing this equals here, I will write equals negative cosine pi over three. What is cosine pi over three? That's one of the values I have memorized. I believe that is one half. So we have negative one half for cosine of negative four pi over three. And this is useful for any angle. It really helps. What if you're given something crazy? You know, what if you're given sine of 15 pi over four, sine of, you know, 27 pi, any, anything like that, as long as you can reduce it or find a reference angle that is a known value, like pi over three, pi over four, pi over six, something like that, then you can evaluate it without actually having to memorize these exact values.
All right, so to finish off the video, I'll just go ahead and show this. Sine of theta, theta is some angle, is the sine of theta hat, we've decided this is the reference angle for theta, right? So sine of theta equals sine of theta hat or negative sine of theta hat, depending on which quadrant theta is in. So if you can find the reference angle, then all you have to decide is, is this positive or is this negative? And then you can find the exact value for this. So this is really useful. And again, theta hat is just the reference angle for theta. So this is really useful. I don't know, this really helped me with trigonometry and helped me having to memorize less and still being able to evaluate everything. So hopefully this video helped. Make sure to hit like and subscribe if it did. Stay tuned for more. Keep flexing those brain muscles and I'll see you in the next video.